Hello Interwebs, welcome to Let's Fix Computers. Um, we've got a bit of a ghetto set up today. Um, I've got a computer in with faulty memory. Now I've been waiting ages for a faulty RAM job to come in so I can show you guys how to diagnose faulty RAM. And unfortunately, the one time it has come in, it's this ancient archaic hunk of junk which doesn't support um, any of my HDMI capture stuff. So we're gonna be doing a bit of camera pointing at screen today. Right, so what we're gonna do, we're going to start up um, Memtest 86 uh, and I'm going to show you what this looks like when it actually encounters faulty RAM. Now you guys have seen me run Memtest 86 before but we've never actually found anything with it. So let's kick this off. Now Memtest 86 is a free download. Uh, if you Google search Memtest 86 you can download it for free and you can download an ISO to make a bootable CD or you can download a little executable and make a bootable flash drive. So once you boot from your Memtest 86 CD or drive you'll be presented with something that looks something like this. It may vary depending on whether you have an EFI system or not, but one way or the other, it'll give you a boot menu. We're gonna press enter for just the default version 4.3 and off it will go. So once it gets going, you'll see something similar to this. So the important information that we're looking for here is the pass progress along the top here. This is the total test pass. Now, in order to run Memtest, we need one full pass, which will increment a one here. Now, it will keep going until we stop it. So we need at least one pass. Then these minor tests, it runs about 11 tests in total, and that's the progress for test four in this instance. Now, what it's doing at the moment is it's writing specific patterns to the RAM in an effort to try and catch the RAM out and make sure that it's working properly. Because the usual culprit is, for example, um, the bit pattern that we're writing here, if we get a faulty, um, if we get a faulty chip on the RAM module, um, one section of the matrix of RAM will flip and default to its neighbor. So for example, this zero will flip to an A because that's what its neighbor's on. And the pattern will be disrupted and Memtest will know that there must be a faulty memory module. So we're gonna let that run through. Now, I've seen this run halfway through already and it came up with an error. So let's let that crunch through and we'll see what those errors look like. Okay, so the error that I saw earlier on has now reappeared. So as you can see, we've got total number of errors one so far. And here are the details of that error. So it was found at 404.2 megabytes. So this tells us that with two gigs of RAM, on two one gigabyte modules, the fault is almost certainly gonna be on the first RAM module because it's at the round about the 400 mark. But we'll investigate that more in a bit. However, first, I'm gonna let this pass run through to the end just to see if it finds anything else. Because one error, it's not, you know, I mean, one error is a fail. We're going to replace some RAM on this computer now. However, the number of total errors that we find across the entire pass will give me a hint as to how bad it is and you know it will possibly just give us more information so I'm gonna let this test run through to the end okay so we have completed our pass so as you can see the pass is, is now on one so we've got one complete pass and we only found one error that's fairly uncommon to be honest but it does explain why the computer has been running for this long because this computer does actually start and boot into Windows and everything um, so however one error is still a failure. This is still a failure, we still have faulty memory in this. And this explains why the customer is having really weird, obscure, intermittent faults. Like they can't save documents and now and then it won't start for no particular reason. And like now and then the mouse doesn't move and that kind of thing. All of these really random occurrences are, are symptoms of memory errors. Because when your memory doesn't work, you get all kinds of really random and inconsistent failures. So, the next thing we need to do is identify what module has failed. So, what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn it off and we're gonna take out one of the memory modules. So let's just cut the power. And now I'm going to have a look. So we've got two slots in here, DIM1 and DIM2. So now, in, because as I mentioned earlier on, because the failure is at 400 megabytes, I'm expecting the first module to be the point of failure. So I'm gonna take that module out. So let's pop that out and I'm doing an inspection on it. And I'm not seeing any obvious problems with it. So let's just leave that out. 
Now, some computers are fussy about what order memory slots are filled in, so you may have to move your memory about to make the computer run with only one module in it. However, this one probably isn't, so we're just gonna start that back up and take it back into mem test. So, because there's no drive connected, it should just post and boot straight back into mem test. All right, here we go, so let's hit enter. Okay, so now I'm gonna leave this to run again, and I'm gonna see if it gets through with no errors. Okay, so we've done a pass with one module installed, and as you can see, we've got one full pass, no errors. Notice that this one didn't take as long because we've got half the amount of memory, so there's half the amount of stuff that needs to be tested. Right, so now we're gonna power off again. And now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take the other memory module out and put the first memory module back in. And now what we're expecting is we're expecting that fault to reappear. However, before I put it in, I'm just gonna wipe down the terminals and I'm gonna grab a toothbrush and just, uh, just gently dust in that slot. That's fine. So, and before anyone starts complaining about static, I'm in the UK, it's like 80% humidity here. It's gonna be fine. So let's drop that back in. Now one of two things will happen. Either the error will reappear because it's a faulty module, or the error will be gone because we've just cleaned some dust off of it. So let's start and see what happens. Okay, so I left this running and our error is back. So you can see we've got one error across the board. So now there's one more test that we need to do. So we're gonna power off. And now what I'm gonna do, I'm going to move the same module to the other slot. And what that is gonna do is it's, gonna, it's going to prove to us that it is definitely the module and not the slot that is faulty. Because now and then you can get a faulty slot on a motherboard. So I've moved across the other slot and we're gonna start up and we're gonna run the test again. Okay, and our single error is back. So we know that it's not a slot issue. We know that it's definitely this module. So where we're up to now, we've now conclusively proven that the, the single module that's still in the computer is faulty. So let's replace it. So I'm gonna drop my RAM out again. So here's our faulty module, that can go to one side and we're going to put in uh, the, known good, the known good module and I have a spare module to replace with. Uh, now this one is untested, it's just from my spares bin because this is DDR2. So we're going to drop that in and now finally we have to start it up and run the test all over again just to make sure that our replacement memory is all clean and clear. So start that up and we're gonna go around one more time. Or not, it's not posting with my replacement module in. That's more like it. All right, well, today I learned that this module is faulty as well. Okay, so we're back up to two gigs of RAM. We're gonna let that run through a full pass and just make sure there's no errors. Okay, right, and we've now got a complete pass with our extra RAM in. So we've now got two gigs of RAM, no errors, pass complete. So we're all finished with this computer now. So I'm gonna go away and service it. So that is how we test RAM. Those are the kinds of errors we expect to see from mem test. So this was a really light failure, one error on the, entire, on, the, on the entire system. That's really uncommon. Very rarely it's just one error. However, just one error, that could be that random blue screen or that random crash that you get like once a week, once a month. It could be just a single error on one module of your RAM. That's what memory errors look like. So when you're chasing that really weird intermittent fault, run mem tests, just make sure your RAM is okay. Thank you very much for watching everyone. I'll see you all next time. Goodbye for now.